Today, many people are fascinated by the Crusades period from the Middle Ages, intrigued by captivating accounts about those Christian Muslim leaders that define this vital time in history. Over decades, their bold actions shaped many important events which still have consequences in modern times. Among these daring figures, one of the most compelling is Baldwin IV, a former king of Jerusalem. The future leader Baldwin IV was born during the mid-year of 1161 AD. His father was Amalric, Count of Jaffa and Ascalon, and his mother was Agnes of Courtney, a Frankish noblewoman. At the age of nine in 1170, William of Tyre was selected by young Baldwin's father, who is now king of Jerusalem, to be his tutor. It was the famed historian William of Tyre who noted young Baldwin suffered no pain in his right arm, which made him suspect leprosy as the reason. Leprosy is a long-term infection by bacteria that can lead to critical damage for nerves, the respiratory tract, eyes, and skin. After Arab physicians were hired to treat him, there was still no improvement in the young boy's condition. However, even though it was presumed he had leprosy, there were no visible symptoms. Everyone was aware of the terrifying consequences, both physically and socially, of a positive diagnosis, so they wished to wait until they were certain. With confirmation of leprosy, young Baldwin may have been required by law to enroll in the Order of St. Lazarus. They were a military order of knights comprised of lepers and those that suffered other diseases. Thus, suspicions concerning young Baldwin having leprosy were kept a secret. For a time, young Baldwin had use of his limbs while still displaying no physical signs of leprosy. Entering his teenage years, optimism and determination continued to motivate him while performing daily activities. Young Baldwin was a quick learner, enjoyed history, and possessed a strong memory, though suffered from a stutter. Due to solid training by Arab horsemen years earlier, young Baldwin was also a great horseman. Suddenly, in 1174 AD, King Amalric, to whom he bore a close resemblance, died from dysentery after a campaign. With the tragic death of his father, young Baldwin was appointed Baldwin IV of Jerusalem by the High Court of Jerusalem and crowned on July 15, 1174. As a result of his youthful age of 13, his responsibility was entrusted to a regent named Count Raymond III of Tripoli. On July 15, 1176 AD, Baldwin IV reached the age of majority to take control of government in his prosperous kingdom. Fortunately, a keen interest in this area during his youth would prove to be of great benefit to him. However, his illness was now visible and beginning to affect him, so it was not expected that he would rule for long. Therefore, one of the most important challenges Baldwin IV had to overcome was leaving a successor for his crown. Now in control of government, one of his first major acts was his refusal to ratify the peace treaty with Egyptian ruler Saladin. Baldwin IV did not want Saladin to increase his might against the Kingdom of Jerusalem, so a key mission was to fight against Saladin's growing power and attack Egypt. At this time, physical signs of Baldwin IV's leprosy made the High Court or Feudal Council of Jerusalem worried about his succession. So in November 1176 AD, they arranged for the marriage of his sister Sibylla to William of Montferrat, also known as William Longsword. Unfortunately, William of Montferrat passed away within the year, leaving behind his pregnant widow. While Saladin was on a campaign at Aleppo in the summer of 1176 AD, Baldwin IV took this opportunity to strike near Damascus, his initiation to actual warfare. Having only the use of one hand due to leprosy, he still insisted on joining to the battle. Then, in August 1176 AD, the combined forces of Baldwin IV and Raymond III of Tripoli attacked Saladin's territory in the Bekaa Valley. Here, they were victorious against Saladin's garrison at Damascus, which made the Egyptian ruler leave his campaign against the assassins. Later, in another cunning move during the winter of 1176-1177, Baldwin entered an alliance with the Byzantine Emperor Emmanuel to be protector of Eastern Christendom, which included the Crusader states and Jerusalem. In return, Emperor Emmanuel approved his empire's naval support for an invasion of Egypt. Though to Baldwin IV's dismay, Philip I of Flanders refused both his offer of regency for the Kingdom of Jerusalem and to participate with his forces in an invasion of Egypt. This prompted the Byzantines to withdraw their naval support for the attack, leaving their alliance in tatters. As a result, Saladin would be spared from a vital opportunity that would challenge his growing power. It was on November the 18th, 1177, that Saladin, knowing that a major part of Crusader forces had left Jerusalem, prepared to attack the key coastal city of Ascalon. He departed Egypt with a massive army of thousands on a campaign which had an ultimate destination of Jerusalem. Upon learning this information, Baldwin IV, at 16 years of age, headed with his vastly outnumbered forces to Ascalon. 
On November the 22nd, when Saladin reached Ascalon, the young king was compelled to engage in battle with Saladin, leading his forces out to meet him. After witnessing the size of Saladin's forces, Baldwin IV returned with his army back to the protection of city fortifications. As for the Egyptian ruler, he noted the small numbers of Baldwin IV's army and proceeded onwards to Jerusalem. He left a small part of his huge army at Ascalon. The rest of his forces spread out over a wide area, ravaging and plundering those villages they came across. At that same time, Baldwin IV summoned Templar knights from the city of Gaza to aid him, and they sent a number of men. Now the combined forces of Baldwin IV and Renau Chatillon left Ascalon and soon joined these Knights Templars to attack Saladin's spread out army. First, they overcame the portion of Saladin's army surrounding Ascalon. Then, while the Egyptian ruler was still unaware, they came in pursuit of his main army. Suddenly, as Saladin's army marched towards Jerusalem, they were surprised by Baldwin IV and his allies at the Battle of Mongisar on November the 25th. Since they were spread out across various areas of the countryside on campaigns of plunder and attack, it was difficult for Saladin to regroup his army. Nevertheless, he soon assembled a good portion to confront these Frankish forces of Baldwin IV. However, even though Saladin's army was continually supplied with troops returning from their pillaging, what began as an inconclusive battle quickly favored the Franks. Baldwin IV's combined forces boldly and relentlessly pressed Saladin's ranks with their cavalry, led by Templar Grand Master Odo of St. Amand, until they broke his lines and began a slaughter. This forced Saladin's army into retreat. Saladin himself was almost lost on that day, saved by a racing camel on which he fled. The forces of Baldwin IV continued pursuing Saladin's army well into the evening, even after King Baldwin IV returned to Ascalon. By this time, Saladin had no other option but return to Egypt. Even in retreat, which included crossing the Sinai Desert, Bedouins attacked the remnants of his army. When they arrived in Egypt, less than 10% of the original army had returned. As for the victorious Baldwin IV, he too would suffer grave consequences. Without having proper treatment like regular cleansings, his deterioration from leprosy increased dramatically by 1179 AD. As time progressed, the deformities and facial disfigurement from this horrific disease consumed more of his body and strength. Eventually, he became paralyzed and blind. At this time, Baldwin IV proposed to leave the throne, though was overruled by the noblemen who held him in great respect and faith. Still seeking a successor, he became worried that Raymond III of Tripoli was conspiring in a coup to wed Sibylla to a man under his influence. Therefore, Baldwin IV arranged a marriage for his widowed sister Sibylla in the spring of 1180 to Guy of Lusignan. This action was a surprise to many. With deep divisions which had formed within the Kingdom of Jerusalem, Baldwin IV made a two-year truce with Saladin in 1180 AD to try and reconcile his domain. The Egyptian ruler eagerly anticipated this truce as he too had prime objectives for achievement. This truce was to end in May 1182. Then in July of 1182 AD, the battles between Baldwin IV and Saladin resumed. At the Battle of Belvoir Castle, also known as the Battle of Le Fourbelay, Saladin's army seen an opportunity to invade the Kingdom of Jerusalem. During this confrontation near Belvoir Castle, both sides lost men to heat exhaustion, though by keeping his men in the field while not directly engaging in a pitched battle, Baldwin IV repelled Saladin's attack and forced him into retreat. However, later in this campaign, Saladin used his Egyptian navy to attack the Crusader port city of Beirut during August 1182 while he laid siege by land. Though once again, Baldwin IV used his prowess to launch a land army. In addition, he arranged a fleet from Acre and Tyre through local appropriations and aided by Italian maritime republics to lift Saladin's naval blockade. This rescued the city of Beirut, forcing Saladin once again to withdraw. In 1183 AD, the High Court decided a new regent was needed for a very sickly and incapacitated Baldwin IV, so he assigned Guy of Lusignan, his brother-in-law, as regent. Suddenly, in late 1183, Saladin attacked the kingdom at Karak, where Guy of Lusignan commanded the Christian forces. Saladin wanted to draw the Frankish forces into direct battle, though Guy of Lusignan maintained a defensive position. Unsuccessful in his attempts, Saladin then laid siege to the fortress. Upon learning this news, Baldwin IV held a harsh view of his commander's actions. The king noted that with his large army and Saladin's maneuvers, that Guy of Lusignan could have engaged the Saracens in battle and won. 
Therefore, Baldwin IV rescinded Guy of Lusignan's regency and took back his control. In addition, his five-year-old nephew was crowned as co-king on November the 20th. Baldwin IV marched to the aid of Karak in an attempt to break Saladin's siege around late November 1183. When Saladin heard of his approach, combined with worries about the protection of Egypt, he retreated once again in early December. However, as a brutal consequence, the leprosy of Baldwin IV advanced further, exacting a greater toll on his health. Early in the year 1185 AD, as a result of his deteriorating condition and the young age of his nephew Baldwin V, he chose Count Raymond III of Tripoli once again as regent. It was recognized that Baldwin V would take power when he came of age to rule. Between March and May the 16th, 1185, Baldwin IV passed away, ending years of physical agony and anguish from leprosy. His body was buried at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in close proximity to his father, King Amalric. Unfortunately, Baldwin V passed away the following year. Incredibly, despite his debilitating leprosy, King Baldwin IV successfully ruled the Kingdom of Jerusalem. He inspired the loyalty of his subjects and kept his kingdom from falling under control of Saladin, who commanded vast armies and surrounding territory. With everything he accomplished in such a short lifespan, it makes one wonder what Baldwin IV could have achieved if given even one more decade of life. Thank you for supporting us at Medieval to Modern. Please be sure to watch another episode shown at the end of this video. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages.